The viscosity of a fluid is the measure of its resistance to gradual deformation by shear stress or tensile stress. For liquids, it corresponds to the informal concept of thickness. For example, syrup has a higher viscosity than water. Viscosity is the property of a fluid which opposes the relative motion between two surfaces of the fluid that are moving at different velocities. In simple terms, viscosity means friction between the molecules of fluid. When the fluid is forced through a tube, the particles which compose the fluid generally move more quickly near the tube's axis and more slowly near its walls, therefore some stress such as a pressure difference between the two ends of the tube is needed to overcome the friction between particle layers to keep the fluid moving. For a given velocity pattern, the stress required is proportional to the fluid's viscosity. A fluid that has no resistance to shear stress is known as an ideal or inviscid fluid. Zero viscosity is observed only at very low temperatures in superfluids. Otherwise, all fluids have positive viscosity and are technically said to be viscous or viscid. A fluid with a relatively high viscosity, such as pitch, may appear to be a solid. Etymology The word viscosity is derived from the Latin viscum, meaning mistletoe and also a viscous glue made from mistletoe berries. Topic <laughs> Definition Topic <laughs> <laughs> Simple Definition The viscosity of a fluid expresses its resistance to shearing flows, in which adjacent fluid layers are in relative motion. A simple example of such a shearing flow is a planar coet flow, where a fluid is trapped between two infinitely large plates, one fixed and one in parallel motion at constant speed. U See illustration to the right. Although viscosity applies to general flows, it is easy to define and visualize in a coet flow. If the speed of the top plate is low enough, then in steady state the fluid particles move parallel to it, and their speed varies from 0 at the bottom to u at the top. Each layer of fluid moves faster than the one just below it, and friction between them gives rise to a force resisting their relative motion. In particular, the fluid applies on the top plate a force in the direction opposite to its motion, and an equal but opposite force on the bottom plate. An external force is therefore required in order to keep the top plate moving at constant speed. In many fluids, the flow velocity is observed to vary linearly from zero at the bottom to u at the top. Moreover, the magnitude f of the force acting on the top plate is found to be proportional to the speed u and the area a of each plate, and inversely proportional to their separation y f equals mu a u y display style f equals mu a frac u y the proportionality factor mu is the viscosity of the fluid with units of pa s display style text pa c d o t text s pascal second the ratio u y is called the rate of shear deformation or shear velocity, and is the derivative of the fluid speed in the direction perpendicular to the plates. See illustrations to the right. If the velocity does not vary linearly with y, then the appropriate generalization is tau equals mu u y. Display style tau equals mu frac partial u partial y where tau equals f, a, and u, y is the local shear velocity. This expression is referred to as Newton's law of viscosity. In shearing flows with planar symmetry, it is what defines mu mu. It is a special case of the general definition of viscosity see below, which can be expressed in coordinate free form. Use of the Greek letter mu for the viscosity is common among mechanical and chemical engineers, as well as physicists. However, the Greek letter eta is also used by chemists, physicists, and the IUPAC. The viscosity mu is sometimes also referred to as the shear viscosity. 
However, at least one author discourages the use of this terminology, noting that mu display style mu can be appear in non-searing flows in addition to shearing flows. Topic: <laughs> General definition. In general, the stresses within a flow can be attributed partly to the deformation of the material from some rest state elastic stress, and partly to the rate of change of the deformation over time viscous stress. In a fluid, by definition, the elastic stress includes only the hydrostatic pressure. In very general terms, the fluid's viscosity is the relation between the strain rate and the viscous stress. In the Newtonian fluid model the relationship is by definition a linear map, described by a viscosity tensor that, when multiplied by the strain rate tensor which is the gradient of the flow's velocity, gives the viscous stress tensor. In Cartesian coordinates, this gives tau i j equals k l mu i j k L V K R L display style tau underscore i j equals sum underscore k sum underscore l mu underscore i j k l frac partial v underscore k partial r underscore l. Since the indices in the above expression can vary from one to three, there are eighty-one viscosity coefficients. Mu i J K L display style mu underscore I J K L in total. However, due to spatial symmetries, these coefficients are not all independent. For instance, for isotropic Newtonian fluids, the 81 coefficients can be reduced to two independent parameters. The most usual decomposition yields the standard scalar viscosity mu and the bulk viscosity kappa. Display style kappa tau equals mu v plus v minus two three mu minus kappa v delta display style math bf tau equals mu left nabla math bf v plus nabla math bf v caret dagger right left frac 2 3 mu kappa right nabla c dot math bf v math bf delta where delta display style math bf delta is the unit tensor and the dagger display style dagger denotes the transpose this equation can be thought of as a generalized form of Newton's law of viscosity. The bulk viscosity expresses a type of internal friction that resists the shearless compression or expansion of a fluid. Knowledge of kappa display style kappa is frequently not necessary in fluid dynamics problems. For example, incompressible liquids satisfy v equals 0 Display style nabla c d o t math b f v equals zero, and so the term containing kappa display style kappa is absent. Moreover, kappa display style kappa is often assumed to be negligible for gases since it is zero display style zero in a monoatomic ideal gas. One situation in which Kappa display style kappa can be important as the calculation of energy loss in sound and shock waves described by Stokes law of sound attenuation since these phenomena involve rapid expansions and compressions topic <laughs> dynamic and kinematic viscosity In fluid dynamics, it is common to work in terms of the kinematic viscosity also called momentum diffusivity, defined as the ratio of the viscosity mu to the density of the fluid rho. It is usually denoted by the Greek letter nu, nu and has units L E N G T H 2 T I M 
e display style mathrm length caret 2 time new equals mu rho display style new equals frac mu rho consistent with this nomenclature the viscosity mu display style mu is frequently called the dynamic viscosity topic momentum transport Transport theory provides an alternate interpretation of viscosity in terms of momentum transport. Viscosity is the material property which characterizes momentum transport within a fluid, just as thermal conductivity characterizes heat transport, and mass diffusivity characterizes mass transport. To see this, note that in Newton's law of viscosity, tau equals mu u y. Display style tau equals mu partial u partial y. The shear stress tau display style tau has units equivalent to a momentum flux, i.e. momentum per unit time per unit area. Thus, tau display style tau can be interpreted as specifying the flow of momentum in the y display style y direction from one fluid layer to the next. For Newton's law of viscosity, this momentum flow occurs across a velocity gradient, and the magnitude of the corresponding momentum flux is determined by the viscosity. The analogy with heat and mass transfer can be made explicit. Just as heat flows from high temperature to low temperature and mass flows from high density to low density, momentum flows from high velocity to low velocity. These behaviors are all described by compact expressions, called constitutive relations, whose one dimensional forms are given here. J equals minus d rho x fix law of diffusion q equals minus k t t x Fourier's law of heat conduction tau equals mu u y Newton's law of viscosity. Display style begin aligned math bf j and equals d frac partial rho partial x q quad text fix law of diffusion math bf q and equals k underscore t frac partial t partial x q quad text Fourier's law of heat conduction tau and equals mu frac partial u partial y q quad q quad text Newton's law of viscosity end aligned where rho display style rho is the density j display style math bf j and q display style math b F Q are the mass and heat fluxes, and D display style D and KT display style K underscore T are the mass diffusivity and thermal conductivity. The fact that mass, momentum, and energy heat transport are among the most relevant processes in continuum mechanics is not a coincidence. These are among the few physical quantities that are conserved at the microscopic level in interparticle collisions. Thus, rather than being dictated by the fast and complex microscopic interaction timescale, their dynamics occurs on macroscopic timescales, as described by the various equations of transport theory and hydrodynamics. <laughs> Newtonian and non-Newtonian fluids Newton's law of viscosity is a constitutive equation like Hooke's law, Fick's law, and Ohm's law. It is not a fundamental law of nature but an approximation that holds in some materials and fails in others. A fluid that behaves according to Newton's law, with a viscosity mu that is independent of the stress, is said to be Newtonian. Gases, water, and many common liquids can be considered Newtonian in ordinary conditions and contexts. There are many non-Newtonian fluids that significantly deviate from that law in some way or other. For example, shear thickening liquids, whose viscosity increases with the rate of shear strain. Shear thinning liquids, whose viscosity decreases with the rate of shear strain. Thixotropic liquids, that become less viscous over time when shaken, agitated, or otherwise stressed. Rheopectic dilatant liquids, that become more viscous over time when shaken, agitated, or otherwise stressed. 
Bingham plastics that behave as a solid at low stresses but flow as a viscous fluid at high stresses. Shear thinning liquids are very commonly, but misleadingly, described as thixotropic. Even for a Newtonian fluid, the viscosity usually depends on its composition and temperature. For gases and other compressible fluids, it depends on temperature and varies very slowly with pressure. The viscosity of some fluids may depend on other factors. A magnetoreological fluid, for example, becomes thicker when subjected to a magnetic field, possibly to the point of behaving like a solid. In solids The viscous forces that arise during fluid flow must not be confused with the elastic forces that arise in a solid in response to shear, compression or extension stresses. While in the latter the stress is proportional to the amount of shear deformation, in a fluid it is proportional to the rate of deformation over time. For this reason, Maxwell used the term fugitive elasticity for fluid viscosity. However, many liquids including water will briefly react like elastic solids when subjected to sudden stress. Conversely, many solids, even granite, will flow like liquids, albeit very slowly, even under arbitrarily small stress. Such materials are therefore best described as possessing both elasticity reaction to deformation and viscosity reaction to rate of deformation, that is, being viscoelastic. Indeed, some authors have claimed that amorphous solids, such as glass and many polymers, are actually liquids with a very high viscosity, greater than 1012 pascals s. However, other authors dispute this hypothesis, claiming instead that there is some threshold for the stress, below which most solids will not flow at all, and that alleged instances of glass flow in window panes of old buildings are due to the crude manufacturing process of older eras rather than to the viscosity of glass. Viscoelastic solids may exhibit both shear viscosity and bulk viscosity. The extensional viscosity is a linear combination of the shear and bulk viscosities that describes the reaction of a solid elastic material to elongation. It is widely used for characterizing polymers. In geology, earth materials that exhibit viscous deformation at least three orders of magnitude greater than their elastic deformation are sometimes called rheids. Measurement. <inaudible> 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 Viscosity is measured with various types of viscometers and rheometers. A rheometer is used for those fluids that cannot be defined by a single value of viscosity and therefore require more parameters to be set and measured than is the case for a viscometer. Close temperature control of the fluid is essential to acquire accurate measurements, particularly in materials like lubricants, whose viscosity can double with a change of only 5 degrees Celsius. For some fluids, the viscosity is constant over a wide range of shear rates Newtonian fluids. The fluids without a constant viscosity non-Newtonian fluids cannot be described by a single number. Non-Newtonian fluids exhibit a variety of different correlations between shear stress and shear rate. One of the most common instruments for measuring kinematic viscosity is the glass capillary viscometer. In coating industries, viscosity may be measured with a cup in which the efflux time is measured. There are several sorts of cup, such as the Zan cup and the Ford viscosity cup, with the usage of each type varying mainly according to the industry. The efflux time can also be converted to kinematic viscosities centistokes, CST, through the conversion equations, also used in coatings. A stormer viscometer uses load based rotation in order to determine viscosity. The viscosity is reported in Krebs units which are unique to stormer viscometers. Vibrating viscometers can also be used to measure viscosity. Resonant, or vibrational viscometers work by creating shear waves within the liquid. In this method, the sensor is submerged in the fluid and is made to resonate at a specific frequency. As the surface of the sensor shears through the liquid, energy is lost due to its viscosity. This dissipated energy is then measured and converted into a viscosity reading. A higher viscosity causes a greater loss of energy. Extensional viscosity can be measured with various rheometers that apply extensional stress. Volume viscosity can be measured with an acoustic rheometer. Apparent viscosity is a calculation derived from tests performed on drilling fluid used in oil or gas well development. These calculations and tests help engineers develop and maintain the properties of the drilling fluid to the specifications required. Topic: 
Topic: Units. The SI unit of dynamic viscosity is Pa s or kilogram m minus one s minus one. The CGS unit is called the poise P, named after Jean Leonard Marie Poissel. It is commonly expressed, particularly in ASTM standards, as centipoise CP, since the latter is equal to the SI multiple millipascal seconds MPAS. The SI unit of kinematic viscosity is square meter per second, whereas the CGS unit for kinematic viscosity is the Stokes Street, named after Sir George Gabriel Stokes. It is sometimes expressed in terms of centistokes CST. In U.S. usage, stoke is sometimes used as the singular form. The reciprocal of viscosity is fluidity, usually symbolized by phi. Topic. 1, μ or F 1, μ, depending on the convention used, measured in reciprocal poise, P-1, or CMSG-1, sometimes called the RHE. Fluidity is seldom used in engineering practice. Non-standard units include the RAIN, a British unit of dynamic viscosity. In the automotive industry the viscosity index is used to describe the change of viscosity with temperature. At one time the petroleum industry relied on measuring kinematic viscosity by means of the Seibolt viscometer, and expressing kinematic viscosity in units of Seibolt universal seconds Other abbreviations such as SSU or SUV are sometimes used. Kinematic viscosity in centistokes can be converted from SUS according to the arithmetic and the reference table provided in ASTM D2161. Molecular origins In general, the viscosity of a system depends in detail on how the molecules constituting the system interact. There are no simple but correct expressions for the viscosity of a fluid. The simplest exact expressions are the green cubo relations for the linear shear viscosity or the transient time correlation function expressions derived by Evans and Morris's in 1985. Although these expressions are each exact, calculating the viscosity of a dense fluid using these relations currently requires the use of molecular dynamics computer simulations. On the other hand, much more progress can be made for a dilute gas. Even elementary assumptions about how gas molecules move and interact lead to a basic understanding of the molecular origins of viscosity. More sophisticated treatments can be constructed by systematically coarse-graining the equations of motion of the gas molecules. An example of such a treatment is chapman enskog theory, which derives expressions for the viscosity of a dilute gas from the Boltzmann equation. Momentum transport in gases is generally mediated by discrete molecular collisions, and in liquids by attractive forces which bind molecules close together. Because of this, the dynamic viscosities of liquids are typically much larger than those of gases. Topic: Gases. Viscosity in gases arises principally from the molecular diffusion that transports momentum between layers of flow. An elementary calculation for a dilute gas at temperature T T and density rho gives mu equals alpha rho lambda 2 k B T pi m display style mu equals alpha rho lambda sqrt frac 2k underscore text b t pi m, where k b display style k underscore text b is the Boltzmann constant m display style m the molecular mass and alpha display style alpha a numerical constant on the order of 1 display style 1 the quantity lambda display style lambda the mean free path measures the average distance a molecule travels between collisions even without a priori knowledge of alpha display style alpha 
This expression has interesting implications. In particular, since lambda display style lambda is typically inversely proportional to density and increases with temperature, mu display style mu itself should increase with temperature and be independent of density. In fact, both of these predictions persist in more sophisticated treatments, and accurately describe experimental observations. Note that this behavior runs counter to common intuition regarding liquids, for which viscosity typically decreases with temperature. For rigid elastic spheres of diameter sigma display style sigma lambda display style lambda can be computed, giving mu equals alpha pi 3 2 k b m t sigma 2 display style mu equals frac alpha pi caret 3 halves frac sqrt k underscore text b m t sigma caret 2 in this case lambda display style lambda is independent of temperature, so mu t one two display style mu propto t caret one half. For more complicated molecular models, however, lambda display style lambda depends on temperature in a non-trivial way, and simple kinetic arguments as used here are inadequate. More fundamentally, the notion of a mean free path becomes imprecise for particles that interact over a finite range, which limits the usefulness of the concept for describing real-world gases. Topic: <laughs> Chapman-Enskog theory. A technique developed by Sidney Chapman and David Enskog in the early 1900s allows a more refined calculation of mu Display style mu. It is based on the Boltzmann equation, which provides a systematic statistical description of a dilute gas in terms of intermolecular interactions. As such, their technique allows accurate calculation of mu. Display style mu. For more realistic molecular models, such as those incorporating intermolecular attraction rather than just hard core repulsion. It turns out that a more realistic modeling of interactions is essential for accurate prediction of the temperature dependence of mu display style mu which experiments show increases more rapidly than the t 1 2 display style t caret 1 half trend predicted for rigid elastic spheres Indeed, the chapman enskog analysis shows that the predicted temperature dependence can be tuned by varying the parameters in various molecular models. A simple example is the Sutherland model, which describes rigid elastic spheres with weak mutual attraction. In such a case, the attractive force can be treated perturbatively, which leads to a particularly simple expression for mu display style mu mu equals 5 16 sigma 2 k b m t pi 1 2 1 plus s t minus 1 Display style mu equals frac 5 16 sigma caret 2 left frac k underscore text b m t pi right caret 1 half left 1 plus frac s t right caret minus 1, where s display style s is independent of temperature, being determined only by the parameters of the intermolecular attraction. To connect with experiment, it is convenient to rewrite as mu equals mu 0 t t 0 3 2 t 0 plus s t plus s 
Display style mu equals mu underscore zero left frac t t underscore zero right caret three halves frac t underscore zero plus s t plus s, where mu zero display style mu underscore zero is the viscosity at temperature t zero display style t underscore zero if mu display style mu is known from experiments at t equals t 0 display style t equals t underscore 0 and at least one other temperature then s display style s can be calculated it turns out that expressions for mu display style mu Obtained in this way are accurate for a number of gases over a sizable range of temperatures. On the other hand, Chapman and Cowling argue that this success does not imply that molecules actually interact according to the Sutherland model. Rather, they interpret the prediction for μ as a simple interpolation which is valid for some gases over fixed ranges of temperature, but otherwise does not provide a picture of intermolecular interactions which is fundamentally correct and general. Slightly more sophisticated models, such as the Leonard-Jones potential, may provide a better picture, but only at the cost of a more opaque dependence on temperature. In some systems the assumption of spherical symmetry must be abandoned as well, as is the case for vapors with highly polar molecules like H2O. Liquids In contrast with gases, there is no simple yet accurate picture for the molecular origins of viscosity in liquids. At the simplest level of description, the relative motion of adjacent layers in a liquid is opposed primarily by attractive molecular forces acting across the layer boundary. In this picture, one correctly expects viscosity to decrease with increasing temperature. This is because Increasing temperature increases the random thermal motion of the molecules, which makes it easier for them to overcome their attractive interactions. Building on this visualization, a simple theory can be constructed in analogy with the discrete structure of a solid. Groups of molecules in a liquid are visualized as forming cages, which surround and enclose single molecules. These cages can be occupied or unoccupied, and stronger molecular attraction corresponds to stronger cages. Due to random thermal motion, a molecule hops between cages at a rate which varies inversely with the strength of molecular attractions. In equilibrium these hops are not biased in any direction. On the other hand, in order for two adjacent layers to move relative to each other, the hops must be biased in the direction of the relative motion. The force required to sustain this directed motion can be estimated for a given shear rate, leading to where n a display style n underscore a is the Avogadro constant, h display style h is the Planck constant, v display style v is the volume of a mole of liquid, and t b display style t underscore b is the normal boiling point. This result has the same form as the widespread and accurate empirical relation where a display style a and b display style b are constants fit from data on the other hand several authors express caution with respect to this model errors as large as 30% can be encountered using equation 1 compared with fitting equation 2 to experimental data more fundamentally, the physical assumptions underlying equation 1 have been extensively criticized. It has also been argued that the exponential dependence in equation 1 does not necessarily describe experimental observations more accurately than simpler non-exponential expressions. In light of these shortcomings, the development of a less ad hoc model is a matter of practical interest. Forgoing simplicity in favor of precision, it is possible to write rigorous expressions for viscosity starting from the fundamental equations of motion for molecules. A classic example of this approach is Irving Kirkwood theory. 
On the other hand, such expressions are given as averages over multiparticle correlation functions and are therefore difficult to apply in practice. In general, empirically derived expressions based on existing viscosity measurements appear to be the only consistently reliable means of calculating viscosity in liquids. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Mixtures, blends, and suspensions. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Gaseous mixtures. The same molecular kinetic picture of a single component gas can also be applied to a gaseous mixture. For instance, in the Chapman Enskog approach the viscosity mu mix display style mu underscore text mix of a binary mixture of gases can be written in terms of the individual component viscosities mu 1 2 display style mu underscore 1 2 their respective volume fractions, and the intermolecular interactions. As for the single component gas, the dependence of mu mix display style mu underscore text mix on the parameters of the intermolecular interactions enters through various collisional integrals which may not be expressible in terms of elementary functions. To obtain usable expressions for mu mix Display style mu underscore text mix, which reasonably match experimental data. The collisional integrals typically must be evaluated using some combination of analytic calculation and empirical fitting. An example of such a procedure is the Sutherland approach for the single component gas discussed above. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Blends of liquids. As for pure liquids, the viscosity of a blend of liquids is difficult to predict from molecular principles. One method is to extend the molecular cage theory presented above for a pure liquid. This can be done with varying levels of sophistication. One useful expression resulting from such an analysis is the lederer rogers equation for a binary mixture. mu blend equals x 1 x 1 plus alpha x 2 lane mu 1 plus alpha x 2 x 1 plus alpha x 2 lane mu 2 Display style mu underscore text blend equals frac x underscore one x underscore one plus alpha x underscore two lane mu underscore one plus frac alpha x underscore two x underscore one plus alpha x underscore two lane mu underscore two, where alpha display style alpha is an empirical parameter and x one two Display style x underscore one two and mu one two display style mu underscore one two are the respective mole fractions and viscosities of the component liquids. Since blending is an important process in the lubricating and oil industries, a variety of empirical or propriety equations exist for predicting the viscosity of a blend, besides those stemming directly from molecular theory. Topic. Suspensions In a suspension of solid particles e.g. micron-sized spheres suspended in oil, an effective viscosity mu f can be defined in terms of stress and strain components which are averaged over a volume large compared with the distance between the suspended particles, but small with respect to macroscopic dimensions. Such suspensions generally exhibit non-Newtonian behavior. However, for dilute systems in steady flows, the behavior is Newtonian and expressions for mu f can be derived directly from the particle dynamics. In a very dilute system, with volume fraction phi 0.02 
Display style phi less m 0.02. Interactions between the suspended particles can be ignored. In such a case, one can explicitly calculate the flow field around each particle independently and combine the results to obtain mu f display style mu underscore text f. For spheres, this results in the Einstein equation mu f equals mu 0 1 plus 5 2 phi display style mu underscore text f equals mu underscore 0 left 1 plus frac 5 2 phi right where mu 0 display style mu underscore 0 is the viscosity of the suspending liquid the linear dependence on phi display style phi is a direct consequence of neglecting interparticle interactions in general one will have mu f equals mu 0 1 plus b phi display style mu underscore text f equals mu underscore 0 left 1 plus b phi right where the coefficient b display style b may depend on the particle shape e.g. spheres rods disks perhaps surprisingly in the century since its introduction the coefficient for spheres b equals 5 2 display style b equals 5 halves has not been conclusively pinned down by experiments with various experiments finding values in the range 1.5 b 5 display style 1.5 less m b less m 5 this deficiency has been attributed to difficulty in controlling experimental conditions in denser suspensions mu f display style mu underscore text f acquires a nonlinear dependence on phi display style phi which indicates the importance of interparticle interactions Various analytical and semi-empirical schemes exist for capturing this regime. At the most basic level, a term quadratic in phi display style phi is added to mu f display style mu underscore text f mu f equals mu zero one plus b Phi plus B one Phi two Display style mu underscore text F equals mu underscore zero left one plus B Phi plus B underscore one Phi carrot two right and the coefficient B one Display style B underscore one is fit from experimental data or approximated from the microscopic theory. In general, however, one should be cautious in applying such simple formulas since non-Newtonian behavior appears in dense suspensions. Phi 0.25 Display style phi GTR sim 0.25 For spheres, or in suspensions of elongated or flexible particles, a distinction must be made between a suspension of solid particles, described above, and an emulsion. The latter is a suspension of tiny droplets, which themselves may exhibit internal circulation. The presence of internal circulation can noticeably decrease the observed effective viscosity, and different theoretical or semi-empirical models must be used. Amorphous <laughs> materials In the high and low temperature limits, viscous flow in amorphous materials, e.g. in glasses and melts, has the Arrhenius form. μ equals a e q r t. Display style μ equals a caret frac q r t, where q is a relevant activation energy, given in terms of molecular parameters. T is temperature, R is the molar gas constant, and A is approximately a constant. 
The activation energy Q takes a different value depending on whether the high or low temperature limit is being considered, it changes from a high value QH at low temperatures in the glassy state to a low value QL at high temperatures in the liquid state. For intermediate temperatures, Q display style Q varies non-trivially with temperature and the simple Arrhenius form fails. On the other hand, the two exponential equation mu equals a t exp b r t 1 plus c exp d r t Display style mu equals at exp left frac b r t right left one plus c exp left frac d r t right right, where a display style a b display style b c display style c d display style d are all constants, provides a good fit to experimental data over the entire range of temperatures, while at the same time reducing to the correct Arrhenius form in the low and high temperature limits. Besides being a convenient fit to data, the expression can also be derived from various theoretical models of amorphous materials at the atomic level. Eddy viscosity In the study of turbulence in fluids, a common practical strategy for calculation is to ignore the small-scale vortices or eddies in the motion and to calculate a large-scale motion with an eddy viscosity that characterizes the transport and dissipation of energy in the smaller-scale flow see large eddy simulation. Values of eddy viscosity used in modeling ocean circulation may be from 5 times 104 to 1 times 106 pascals s depending upon the resolution of the numerical grid. Selected substances Observed values of viscosity vary over several orders of magnitude, even for common substances. For instance, a 70% sucrose sugar solution has a viscosity over 400 times that of water, and 26,000 times that of air. More dramatically, pitch has been estimated to have a viscosity 230 billion times that of water. Water The viscosity of water is about 0.89 mPa s at room temperature 25 degrees Celsius. As a function of temperature, the viscosity can be estimated using the semi-empirical relation μ equals a times 10 b t minus C display style mu equals a times 10 caret b t c, where a topic 2.414 times 10 minus 5 pascals s b 247 8 k and c equals 140 K experimentally determined values of the viscosity at various temperatures are given below equals topic air equals under standard atmospheric conditions 25 degrees Celsius and pressure of 1 bar, the viscosity of air is 18.5 micropascals s, roughly 50 times smaller than the viscosity of water at the same temperature. Except at very high pressure, the viscosity of air depends mostly on the temperature. <laughs> Other common substances equals 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 see also